Hello everyone, Are here. Welcome back. So a story out of Zimbabwe recently, four Chinese miners from a company called Zong Jian had clashes or clashed with artisan miners or who are local Zimbabwean miners at a mining place known as Premier Estates within Zimbabwe. So are these two groups of people clashed because the Chinese miners came and found these people mining, other artisan miners, and claimed that they had a mining license over this particular mine. And on top of that, they also came with an excavator, you know, trying to start their own work within this particular mine. According to the report, uh, this mine is owned by a local known as Zimunya. So him and his fellows got angry because the Chinese are trying to take over the, the mine. They found them working. So they went and get their, got their fellows and then attacked the Chinese miners using all the mining tools that they had in place. So according to this report still, uh, the Chinese miners, uh, one got uh, broken ribs and then one lost a finger. The excavator was being driven at Zimbabwean, so he was spared, he was not uh, beat up. And by the time the police arrived, the artisan miners had already left, but six people were arrested in, in regards to this incident. And they were granted bail on $3,000 each to by the local magistrates. According to a local environment rights group within Zimbabwe known as Natural Resource Governance, there is growing tension between Zimbabwean miners, you know the ones who are mining on large scale, and Chinese miners because they feel like Chinese miners act with impunity, they act as if they are above the law, they do not have any respect for them. The government has turned a blind eye on the issues within the mining sector and such clashes are arising because of the government's lack of transparency when they are issuing out the mining titles. Many Zimbabweans are turning into artisan miners or small scale miners to be able to earn a living within their homeland and this is the reason why they are always clashing with the Chinese who are also doing mining on a large scale still within their homeland. So this Chinese company has a bad reputation. Uh, last year in November, according to the same report, it used an excavator to fill a mine shaft where my miners were under digging inside the ground. So they just brought this excavator and covered you know, the entire ground, yet people were there, so meaning they just got buried. So two bodies were discovered later, you know, people who had died. But according to the locals, they think that 10 people had died, you know, because of this incident. And then the search was later abandoned, and the manager of this company demanded that the community produce some sort of evidence to show that certain amount of people were missing and had been within the mine. The small-scale miners and the artisan miners within Zimbabwe have a business thing going on, according to the report. So sometimes they'll partner up and the locals will borrow machinery from the Chinese to be able to mine, or the locals will sell their gold or their, you know, minerals, whatever they have dug out of the ground to the Chinese. But the locals also say that the Chinese do take advantage and exploit them. So according to the Ministry of Mines website, the mining industry in Zimbabwe contributes to 16% of the country's GDP and the most important minerals mined in Zimbabwe is gold, asbestos, uh, chromite, coal and base metals. So this is just one of those stories like a typical report story out of Africa because I don't even know why Chinese are like in Zimbabwe mining gold, you know. If you ever leave Africa and step in China, would you mine anything there in the first place? Or would you even be able to pick something from there and take it to your country like, I don't know, like a rock or soil or anything? So uh, it all comes back to our leaders, you know, and how they control the economies and how they do plan out these things. But definitely... I mean, Chinese shouldn't be in, like, Zimbabwe deep in the village, you know, mining gold. In addition to this story, last year we also saw another scenario where Chinese companies were harming the environment, even endangering wild species within Hawangwe National Park, which happens to be the biggest reserve or biggest national park. Has to, it has over 40,000 elephants, you know, which is quite a lot of elephants. So Chinese companies were mining coal within this national park until 
you know activists and environmentalists you know came out and made a cry to the Zimbabwe government and then the government decided to ban coal mining you know by these Chinese companies within Hawangwe so it really comes back to the leaders you know if the leaders don't make an effort to protect the people if they don't make an effort to do things right then we shall keep getting such stories you know at the end of the day anyways you know share your thoughts in the comment section and let us know what you think about this story I check out my YouTube channel it's called Aray Kembabazi my Twitter and Instagram also called Aray Kembabazi and I'll see you on the next story bye